Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about different types of acids, binary acids, oxy acids, carboxylic acids, and Lewis acids. So let's start with binary acids. This is certainly the one we're most familiar with. Binary acids consist of two things, hence binary, H and one other element. So this is the kind of thing we're most familiar with, HCl, HBr, a lot of our strong acids like this are these binary acids, right? HI, these are all binary acids. Now, when we think about combining H with other elements, you can have varying acidities, some strong acids, some weak acids. And the general trend, if we look at the periodic table, right, this is going left to right across a period, Acid behavior gets stronger going left to right, and it also gets stronger going top to bottom down a group. Okay, now within a group, remember groups are these columns, carbon and silicon are in the same group, fluorine, chlorine, bromine are in the same group, the halogens. Within a group, bond strength is really the most important factor. The stronger that bond, right, if you think about what is an acid, well, it's something that donates its proton, thus breaking apart this chemical bond right here between H and A, right? So this bond strength, the harder it is to break, the less it's going to end up as the products behaving like an acid. So HF has a very, very strong bond. So even though it's with these other halogens in the same group where HCl, HBr, HI are all strong acids, HF is a weak acid because that bond is so strong. So within a given group like the halogens here, the bond strength is really what determines how acidic it is. Now, within a given period, remember silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine are all in the same period, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, all in the same period. Going across a period, it's really the polarity, right? This difference in electronegativity that is the most important. You need this charge separation in order to donate H with a positive plus charge here. And so, Methane, not acidic at all, pretty neutral. There's no electronegativity difference here. But as we get over to here, HF, really, really high electronegativity difference. And so you do develop this H plus like nature in that polar bond. Uh, and that makes it more of an acid than say water or NH3. So that's binary acids and explaining sort of the trends in the periodic table for binary acid behavior. A second type of acid we might have is not a binary acid, but an oxy acid. And oxy acids consist of hydrogen, oxygen, and one other element, usually a nonmetal. So we have a list down here of a bunch of different types of oxy acids, hypochlorous acid, hypobromous, hypoiodous. And the point here is that these things behave as weak acids differently. Okay, You can have strong oxy acids. H2SO4, right? Here's hydrogen, oxygen, and one other nonmetal. But what we're showing here, we know H2SO4 is strong. What we're showing here is these are all weak acids. Here are their Ka values. Okay, and what is the trend here? And so let's think about this chlorine attached to this oxygen, which is attached to this hydrogen, right? And making an acid, remember, In order to favor this over here, you might want a structure in the original acid compound that favors creating a sort of H plus environment. So what's important here is that as the electronegativity of this nonmetal increases, it gets more acid-like, it gets to be a stronger acid, okay? So <clears throat> with a given structure, we can look at this hypochlorous versus this hypobromous. And because chlorine is more electronegative than bromine, 
The negative effect here is that there's sort of a uh, withdrawal of electrons towards this chlorine. Now there's a withdrawal of electrons towards this bromine as well, but it's not as large as the withdrawal of electrons from this bond here, okay? So what you're doing is this bromine or this chlorine, which is pretty electronegative, is able to kind of withdraw electrons away from this OH bond. And so if you can weaken this OH bond a little bit, just like we talked about back here, as you go down a group, right, this bond strength gets weaker, and so it gets to become a stronger acid. So by withdrawing some of this electron density away, you're weakening this OH bond so it becomes easier to donate that H away as an H+. And so hypochlorous, which has chlorine, which chlorine is much more electronegative, it's withdrawing the electrons away more. The OH bond is then weaker, so it becomes a stronger acid when compared to bromine or iodine. And you see that reflected in the KAs. Now, it's still a pretty weak acid, 10 to the negative 8, but that's still stronger than bromine, 10 to the negative 9, or iodine, 10 to the negative 11, or even water, which has this same type of structure. So what we're doing here is comparing these different oxy acids with the same structure. This might not apply when you get to other oxy acids with different structures. So that's an oxy acid. Again, exactly as it sounds, it's going to have H with an oxygen, oxy, as well as some other element. So we have binary acids, we have oxy acids. The third type we're gonna talk about here is carboxylic acids. And this is a functional group we talk a lot about in organic chemistry, but it has this COOH, okay? And we use an R here to designate something else. So the R here could be a CH3 group, right? So you could have a CH3, right? Bonded to a carbon, which has a double bond to an oxygen and then a single bond to this OH group. Okay, so here is a carboxylic acid, right? The R group could be just a hydrogen. This is another carboxylic acid. The point is in both cases you have this COOH, COOH type group, right? That's what we're looking for. Now, why are these acids? Well, they're acids because you have this OH group here. And what happens is the other oxygen here is electronegative. So kind of like we just talked about back here, when you have something else as part of the chain that can withdraw electrons away, that increases the acidic-like behavior of this hydrogen. It becomes more like an H plus and leaves more easily. So these oxygens up here, circled in green, draws electron density from that OH bond. So it makes it more polar. This H now looks more like an H plus. You've lost density out of this bond. It's gone this way. It's gone this way. And so you've weakened that bond. You've created more of an H plus. It's easier for it to leave. And again, that's what being an acid is all about, getting this H plus to be created. Now, there's a second part of this type of structure, carboxylic acids, that makes it more acid-like. And it's the fact that its conjugate base, right, this A- minus structure, which we'll call the carboxylate anion, has resonance forms. And so if you just think about this picture of equilibrium, okay, if you stabilize this, and if this becomes more and more favorable, right, that's the same as saying, you know, you're making it more and more favorable favorable for H plus to happen, which is what we talked about here. So likewise, we're making H plus more favorable, so it's acting more acid-like. If we make this more favorable, it acts more acid-like because the equilibrium will lie further to the right here if this A minus is pretty stable or favored. And so that's what we're showing down here with this resonance. Resonance is something that stabilizes, in this case, this anion. And so if this A minus, right, this conjugate base of this acid has this resonance, it's more stable, it's more favorable for the equilibrium to go to the right and create this stable thing. 
And so that along with this second oxygen withdrawing, both of those combined factors make this carboxylic acid, this type of structure with the COOH group act like an acid. The last type of acid we're gonna talk about, binary oxyacid carboxylic acids, is a Lewis acid. And this is really a new definition of acids and bases. We started off these lectures, this lecture series on acids and bases, talking about uh, Arrhenius acids. and Bronsted-Lowry. Right? And now we'll have Lewis. Okay, and the Lewis definition is uh, a bit, well, is very different. Remember for uh, Rhenius, we defined these as, you know, an acid as a substance that increases the amount of H+. So, uh, an Arrhenius acid here is uh, something that uh, creates H+. Bronsted-Lowry, we said, is a proton donor. Okay, where Arrhenius was creating an increase of concentration of H+, in the solution, Bronsted-Lowry was about being a proton donor. Uh, a Bronsted-Lowry base is a proton acceptor. An Arrhenius base is something that creates OH-. Right, an Arrhenius base is sodium hydroxide, but ammonia, which is a base, is not an Arrhenius base necessarily, but it is something that is a uh, proton acceptor. NH3 creates NH4+. Now, Lewis bases are more about the electrons and electron pairs. That's what we're concerned with here. Okay. And so the definition is that Lewis acids are electron pair acceptors, Lewis bases are electron pair donors. So up to this point, we've really been concentrating on, you know, H plus proton donation, maybe OH minus creation, uh, maybe proton accepting, but now it's really all about what are the electrons doing. Now, all Bronsted-Lowry acids also qualify as Lewis acids or Lewis bases. So my sort of prototypical Bronsted-Lowry uh, base, this proton acceptor, Right, so uh, proton donor or proton acceptor here for the base. Uh, the Bronsted-Lowry base, where NH3 can accept a proton, well, it's also able to donate electrons. That's sort of the same thing. When this NH3 accepts a proton to make NH4+, it's because it has taken this electron pair and donated it in that process. So we can think about this acting like a Lewis base in other contexts. And what this Lewis base will do, shown here as NH3, is donate this electron to BF3. And it'll actually create a bond out of that. So this is still an acid-base scenario. Why? Because this BF3, we're going to define here as a electron pair acceptor. It's a Lewis acid. Okay, and you can create these bonds and now you have these positive and negative charges here. But this does behave like an acid. And this really opens up a whole new uh, suite of chemistry, of acid chemistry, when we consider uh, these Lewis acids as electron pair acceptors. Notice I can't say BF3 is a Bronsted-Lowry acid because BF3 doesn't have any H pluses or protons to freely donate. So it can't be a Bronsted-Lowry. Similarly, it can't create H plus in solution. It doesn't have any Hs to do that. So it's not going to be a Bronsted-Lowry or an Arrhenius type acid. The only definition of BF3 as an acid is a Lewis acid, okay? So BF3 here is something that meets the Lewis definition of an acid, but does not meet the Bronsted-Lowry definition of an acid. So we'll end our lecture series on acids and bases, sort of where we started with defining what is an acid and what is a base with Arrhenius and Bronsted-Lowry, but now we have Lewis as well.
So in this lecture, we talked about binary acids, oxy acids, carboxylic acids, and now Lewis acids. And this really completes our uh, lecture series on acids and bases. So that'll do it for this video. See you next time.